The season has come to an end for the Louisiana Christian University Wildcats, but not without an exciting game for the home finale. The Wildcats dropping a tough one to Texas Wesleyan, the number seven team in the country. 63 to 42 was the final score, and we get to talk about that game and wrap up the season. Joining us on the set is Ben McLaughlin, the head coach of the LCU Wildcats. And even though that final score, 63-42, is a 21-point margin, People that were at that game or saw the game know it was a lot closer than that. Your guys came out and played really great football all day. Yeah, I believe it was even, you know, in the in the middle of the third quarter, it was, just, you know, a one touchdown margin and, and we just weren't able to make that last stop or get that one score to, to make that back into a tie game in the second half. But uh, definitely was exciting and I think all three phases of the game and parts played really well. And when you play an undefeated top 10 ranked team in the nation, that's, you know, uh, setting records from from the offensive perspective, you've got to be able to show up with your A plus plus game, and I think we showed up with our A game. But you, you got to be able to play perfect to beat a team like that, and and we just weren't just quite perfect there. But super proud of the fight that they had, and 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 the performance that that a lot of those guys put out. When you look at the final stats of the day, you out out pace them in terms of offense 573 yards to 500 and this is one of the most prolific offensive teams in the entire country yeah no I think offensively our guys probably played their best game of the year uh, you know when you take into account you know the the competition and the and the level of that we were that, that we knew we were going into so uh, was very proud of them very proud of, uh, of the offensive line ran the ball against one of the best fronts that we faced and um, just again, I couldn't have been more proud of our guys and uh, of how they responded and um, to the, to the season. And you could easily show up in that game and think, well, what is this one for? But um, the effort was some of the best effort that I've seen all year. Yeah, you come out right away on that first drive, march right down the field, get a touchdown, and I'm thinking, wow, this mm -hmm. is going to be interesting. But then. They come right back and they get a big kickoff return to take it inside the 10 yard line. So it just kind of set the tone for what the day was going to be like. Yeah, and, and before that offensive touchdown, you know, we, we deferred and then knew we were going to onside kick it. So we had that surprise onside out the game. So just want to let our kids know we're going into this thing to win. I'm not sure we're not trying to play to keep it close. You know, we're going to win. That's why we knew from the get go we told them we we're going to come out with an onside kick. And we had a few things up our sleeve that we were going to try to have some fun with it and let our kids have, be in position to make some plays and so yeah definitely the first three or four minutes of that game clock kind of lets you know what you're about to be in for for that whole day. No question um, for Texas Wesleyan their running back Ernest Caesar I noticed coming into the game I looked at his stats and I had to do a double take because I think he had 33 rushing touchdowns and five receiving touchdowns coming into the game then he goes out and rushes for 251 yards and six touchdowns mm -hmm. so his season average for touchdowns is for a game that's right. unheard of. To yeah, me. he is, he, and he's been with them for a while. You know, he's a guy that's uh, that's been on that program, and you've seen his name for the last few years when you kind of go look at the archives. And so, he's definitely a guy. And you, when you look at him, he's an undersized guy. Mm -hmm. You know, you could you could see why maybe big programs would pass him up, but it, but he has shown that. Uh, that he is one of the most elite uh, college football players in the nation is at the NAI level and at any level. So he's, we knew going in that he was a key guy and we did everything we could to stop him and he still made some plays. And so it was a uh, hats off to him. He's a great, great man. Got to shake his hand after the game and uh, uh, looking forward. Hopefully they can represent our conference well in the playoffs, them and, them and Ottawa. Both of them got in. You guys have a pretty good uh, running back yourselves. Dalen Charles, he goes out his last game, 162 yards, three touchdowns. I know you're going to miss him a ton next year. Yeah, no, he's, he's you know, for three years he's gotten a lot of carries. And I mean, this was the first year that he kind of was the feature back and, um, you know, 19 touchdowns, I believe, on the year. And, and that's on, on an offense that, I mean, he still split carries. You know, we always, you know, uh, he wasn't, he was getting about 60 to 60% of the carries. But, I mean, those stats he got are, uh, are, are splitting time. And so, but he was, he was our, our premier back and he was a leader for us and had a great career and I'm glad to see him go out on that note it was uh he had he had one of his best games that I've seen him have a couple more seniors going out on a really good note River Thompson mm -hmm. passes for 366 yards two touchdowns those two touchdowns going to Ethan Chrisman who finished with 226 yards in the game 
So uh, I know River went through some struggles this year, but he closed his season so strongly for you. For sure, and, and uh, like we've talked about it before, super proud of, of the way that he fought through. I mean, look, go look at the nation. I mean, the quarterback position is such a is one that everybody talks. But there's a lot of there's a lot of adversity that goes on in that position because you can only play one, and you really don't have. To, you, it's hard to split time with them. And so when we were trying, when we were losing a lot of those close games, we were just looking for answers and sparks. And through all that, he was super strong. He was always a leader. He was always had a great attitude, and and his ability to bounce back and and, and help us with three of his best games here at the end were were, were a credit to his, um, you know, just his personality and his perseverance and what he's going to be now as he moves on in, in life. And so, yeah, great for him and Ethan. You know, he had two touchdown catches, but he was two yards away from having four touchdown catches. He got caught on the one yard line twice. And so, uh, but but another guy that's been a player for us for three years, or he's played a lot. The last three years and have been a great program guy so it was uh, fitting for a lot of those guys to see them go out like that yeah I was going to say so many seniors you honor them before the game mm -hmm. with the annual senior day ceremony and just watching each one come out I'm thinking wow what are they going to do to replace him what are they going to do right. to replace him you definitely have had impact from the senior class in some really special ways. Yeah, the, uh, we talked about it before. It's these last two years, last year's senior class and this year's senior class. I mean, they were what made this, that group, why you know, Coach Maddox has run last year was so special because last year's seniors and then this year's seniors, last year's juniors, they have played since there. For, they all started as true freshmen. And, they, and so we knew it was going to take a big hit when we lost last year's class, and we knew this one. And so when you're looking at the team that we have going into next year, um, it's a little bit scary because there's going to be very few starters on next year's team uh, that, that people recognize because they've played behind these last two classes. But there is a lot of excitement there because there's going to be a lot of new faces and we're in, in the recruiting scene of it and, uh, um, and things. So uh, we're going to be able to really hit the reset button and really kind of mold this thing, hopefully after the way I envision a program and our staff does it. So there's a lot of promise in the future, but uh, definitely some holes to fill. I don't want to try to think about that just yet. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about what happens now in the off season. This is now your first full year mm -hmm. to be able to recruit. And as you said, kind of with the style of program that you want to have, not that that's in any way critical of what's been there before, but just every coach kind of has his own style, and you recruit players to that style. Right. I mean, there's no, you know, Coach Maddox and myself, or we, we're great friends, but, you know, we, we, we do approach uh, programs differently. He's a defensive-minded guy, and so uh, any time that, you know, and, and you know, and, and, but Coach Maddox hired a great offensive coordinator, and they had a lot of, a lot of points. I'm an offensive-minded guy, but we're going to be great on defense, too, but there is a, a, a way that, and we all envision a way to, to recruit them, and so anytime you have transition, moving from one to the other can be a little bit challenging, and you see some of those, those growing pains so uh, definitely um, there's a lot of ways to win football games the biggest thing with the football program and any football program is consistency mm -hmm. so that's what made coach Maddox and his run lead up to being up having that great year is he had that good consistency of four years of doing it the way he wanted done and it culminated to a championship and so our thought process is we're going to be here this transition was made, made a little bit different but we're going to be consistent so that in three or four years we hope to be right there again like just like he did and so and then I'll Obviously, you know, for me personally, being this place that I am, and I would love that to be, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then you can have that sustained success with that consistent model for a lot of years. And so that's the model for success, and it's going to be hard and a lot of hard work. But we're looking to. I got coaches on the road today, so we're we're all out there, and we're um, this job never stops. When you sell this program, what's your main selling point to those high school seniors? You know, we're. What we want to tell them is we, we want to really recruit Louisiana. Louisiana has got so much talent, and we're the only non-Division I scholarship school, and so there's a lot of kids that get overlooked, and so they're, you know, I don't want them to look outside the state to have to move on. If they want to be a scholarship football player, we want to keep them in the state, but just we want to be a family-first relationship place that we're going to, you know, we're going to talk Jesus every single day. It's going to be the center point of our school, and it's the center point of our program, and let these kids know they can go to, I mean, we'll show them this film we'll show them Texas Wesleyan like you this is high level football if you want to play high quality football and go to a place it's going to treat them uh, as, as well as anybody's been treated you get that good mix of it's a lot of what you know it's that high school feel we're going to know you you know this cool but with that college level of, of um, 
of expectation and of competition. It's a good mix of those two, and it's a fun place to go have a career of college football. I know Centenary started a program. Mm -hmm. Does that offer recruiting challenges since they're up in that Shreveport area? It does. North Louisiana has always been a challenge because you've got all those Division II schools right across the border, and, and you got the ETBU, and so they're just another one up there. So, um, yeah, But, yeah, they do a great job with their way they do some things, and um, the ability for us to have scholarships in the NAI level does give us a little bit of extra, but at the end of the day, you don't have, you know, we don't have, we're not LSU, we don't have 85 full scholarships so there's still a lot of kids that come down here just like I did and they're paying for a majority of their school and so when you're and those are program kids and those are kids that come in as program kids but end up being starters at ju as juniors that are development kids and so when you're when you're trying to recruit they're definitely going to do it they're doing a great job up there for those so there's at the end of the day you know when you look at how you recruit kids if we're going to I'm going to have a coaching staff full of great men that are going to sell themselves in this program and there's a bunch of kids out there and we don't have to get all of them we just got to get the right ones and so that's what we're, our goal is and we're planning on doing that for next year at least this year you had some freshmen that really mm -hmm. made an impact we talked about Jamarian Jackson obviously Allen Hamilton got some run at quarterback in Saturday's game uh, Trey Grogan you switched him from receiver mm -hmm. to safety and he comes up with a couple of interceptions yeah we you know we had a big freshman class because we've talked about our sophomores and junior classes were so small that we had a big senior class and we've had a big freshman class and so you know in today's day and age with the portal now now we've got a we've got to recruit in our locker room as much as we've got to recruit outside of it because uh, but a lot of those guys that got playing time and they really they've stepped up in some young leadership roles and they're going to be the guys that's going to spearhead this thing for next and during off season and next year so excited some of them got a lot of experience for sure I guess now you get a chance to reconnect with your family a little bit and <laughs> don't have those quite as long days we do look I will say you know we're we're a family first uh, organization and and you know this job is very demanding but um, there's no you know we are a you know you know, God, family, football, that's kind of, that is our, and we've got a sign of that in our locker room, and so I make sure our coaching staff live by that, so we, we do try to keep it balanced, but yes, it is going to be nice over Thanksgiving and Christmas to be able to go out and spend a little bit more time with all of our families and let our kids go home and do that as well. This is a grind for them. Some of those kids, they haven't stopped since July the 7th when they showed up for summer, so being able to decompress and recharge your battery so that when we come back after Christmas um, starts over. Well, we're looking forward to next year already, and I know you guys will be working hard in this off season. So thank you for all your time during this year. It's been really enjoyable. I know it wasn't the final record that you wanted, but you can definitely see where there's a lot of potential. We talked about it. You know, we you can be results oriented, or you can be process oriented. We, with four or five plays, we're sitting here at seven and four, and we're at four and seven. So the results didn't happen, but the process of get we are right where I felt like we probably are. Um, now we got to find a way to go make those few plays, but I'm I'm super excited and very optimistic about the direction that we're going. So no doubt the results were what we wanted, but I'm very happy with where we are at this point, and we're going to make another step next year. All right. Well, we can't look we can't wait to get to next yes, year. Very much looking forward to it, Ben. Thank you. Yeah, thank you as well, and thank you all for watching this year our cat chat with head coach Ben McLaughlin. Once again, thanks to Jeff Young for doing the technical directing for us during the show, Danny Cobb for providing us with some of the video, and we appreciate you watching each week. So until next season, for Coach McLaughlin, I'm Al Quartermont. Hope you have a great holiday season.